All right, y'all. Good day, good day. Welcome to the James Kool Aid Gives podcast. Um, you know, it's been some developing things that happened since we last had a chance to kick it. You know, this is uh, something that I went to through of his paperwork, and I want y'all to see it. Something he wrote. This is called. That cat Gibbs and Fat Cat. And it's the final chapter of what he wrote supposed to be in y'all book. So I hope that it is, and if it's not, he's hoodwinking y'all again. This is in his own words what Mr. Brian intended for y'all to have when he first was writing the book. I know you can't see, so I'll read it. Brian or Glaze are not selfish individuals. I say all because they are two separate personalities. Sort of. Since birth, both was taught that it is always better to give than receive. One thing both hate more than anything is to have someone take their kindness for weakness and attempt to insult their intelligence. I sit back and reflect on life and remember when Brian wanted to be a major league baseball player. To this day, he actually feels that his dream would have become reality if he would only pursue it instead of going the other route. As far as school was concerned, he was always slightly above the average student. Brian Inglays made about 13 years ago. It seems so strange how these two individuals came into each other's life. As I put down my thought, I tried to pinpoint exactly when I went wrong. I can't read y'all everything, y'all. But on page 336, I found something interesting about this brother that he talked about. Oh, you wasn't the smartest. You ain't that smart. You know, how did you not do so much time? You ain't that smart. Now on 336, we comes to this part. Um, he goes, out of everyone I spoke with, my brother James Kool-Aid didn't agree with me cooperating with the fans. He told me that I knew what I was up against from the very beginning. He told me that out of everyone, he just couldn't see me cooperating with the government. But I told him that the fans was in plain and that if I didn't cooperate, then I could end up spending the rest of my life in jail. He say that he didn't want me spending the rest of my life in jail either. Then he say that he wouldn't sanction anything, but that whatever I decided to do would be on me. Then he added that nothing would change the fact that we are brother or the love he has for me. That really touched me. And I clearly understood what he was saying. I talked to Pappy about what I was going to do, and he kept saying he didn't know me like that and couldn't see me turning from a cold-blooded gangster to a snitch. Pappy kept saying, Glaze, don't go out like that. I don't know you that way, but I told him I'm going to go against the grain by telling him everything I know. Then I told him that if he thought I was wrong, then he could take the razor from his dreadlock head and cut me across my throat. But Pap said he couldn't chop me because he loved me like a brother. I guess he was just to use, I guess he was just to use to hear me say death before dishonor and loyalty to the bitter end that he was confused and couldn't understand my decision to cooperate. We talked for a long time in that conference room on the ninth floor at the MCC, New York. A snitch, maybe, cooperating with the government is something that went against my principle. But the other thing I did, which eventually led to me cooperating with the feds, was wrong, too. In making choices, we sometimes have to decide between the lesser of the two evils. I swallow a very bitter pill by turning against my former colleagues in the drug game, but I'm sure I chose the lesser evil. 
I'm a survival and my family mean more to, to me than anything in the world. And I will be with my family, not spending the rest of my life in prison. The game is really over. I hope y'all can see this. But what I really want y'all to see that this stuff is not made up. This stuff is definitely not made up. I want you to see what he said about his brother. This is his own writing. I want y'all to see what he said about James Kool-Aid Gibbs being the only one who told him not to do it. That brother he talked so bad about, got so many stories to tell about, I really hope y'all can see this. And if you can't, guess what? I'm going to make it available to you um, with um, you being able to cash at me. I just got to figure out through my people how to do that. You know, we're going to give you this. We're going to give you his cooperation paper. We're going to give you his sentences. We're going to give you his plea agreement. We're going to give you a whole bunch of things. You know, we're just going to figure out that price and with shipping and handling. But we, we, we definitely going to do it. And let's get back to one thing, y'all. I understand that a lot of y'all Glaze fan, Brian fan, you know, y'all so disgruntled about, you know, why am I doing this? I'm only doing it because the brother had no business undermining credible people like myself, like Larry D, like the Mencio, and a whole bunch. The list goes on. Most of that shit that he tells you story on, he either don't really know the people, like he don't know Quarterfield, never met him, never met no Carl Bazemore, I guard, you know, but that's another thing coming to my platform. We're gonna do something about Ocean Hill, Brownsville. We're gonna talk about some real players that this guy got no idea of, because again, he wasn't part of it. Same way he wasn't part of no Kingsboro. He don't know half of this stuff that he talks about on his show. The guy is a good listener and remember everything. He got an elephant brain when it comes to things that he could profit off. But when it comes to the bullshit that he do, he seems to forget sometimes. But anyhow, like I say, he, he always telling lies and tell a story. So like, I goes back to when I found out wrestling was fake. I was so hurt. I couldn't believe it. And this is the same thing his fans are going through. They find out that this guy is a phony. He then hoodwinked them, lied to them. And y'all can't get over it. Y'all think he was a guard. But, I mean, like I say, most narcissists is known to fool people. If you don't have a high school level, a high school education, he could fool you. He, he could fool some professional. You understand? But when you look at him carefully, when you listen to his story carefully, when you go back to an episode he done did, you understand, before, and look at the next one, the man done changed his lives. I mean, that's what most narcissists do. They don't never stop, they just change victim. So I'm the victim today, one of y'all be the victim tomorrow when y'all go um, against them. But like I say, save yourself some headache. Go to your phone right now, and go to his channel and press the unsubscribe button. Because trust me, in the long run, you'll be more happy with yourself. I mean, if you just like hearing lies, continue to watch him. All right, he got a piece coming out today, he say, about when him, myself, met with a US um, DA named Leslie Carwell back in August of 2010. People, let me be the first one to say, I didn't say that before. Yes, we did meet with that lady on that day. She was no longer a prosecutor. But I stopped him in his track on the way. Say, why do you got to meet with these people? You didn't did your time. You free. You've been out for 13 years, whatever it might have been the case. Why, why are you meeting her? Oh, because I want to thank her for saving my life. I say, boy, you understand? You're crazy. But you know what? He, we went to lunch with the lady. First thing the lady say, oh, you look like what you did um, in your surveillance picture. You understand? So Rich, sometime or another, they didn't surveil me or whatever. But I never met that lady before that day. Never talked to her. 
prior to that, never saw her again in my life. At that time, she was in private practice um, working for a company that was um, going against Enron, E-R-R-O-N, that big um, electric company out in Texas. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But other than that, no, I never talked to that lady about nothing. Never had no reason to. Now, he also mentioned in one of um, his on broadcast that I talked to somebody named Joseph Ponzi. I sure did. Ask him how did that conversation come about. Joseph Ponzi and Rick Martinez and some other lady who was there, I guess she was a fan agent also. Ask him how did those conversations come around. They never called me. They never had no way of reaching me to my knowledge. But because he's the informant that he is, this is even after he's been out for 14 years, he contacted me, told me they get ready to indict me. And I say, well, fuck it, let them indict me. So I guess that didn't work. So a couple of days later, he called back crying, yo, man, I told him, yo, I'll sell my house. Do you understand? You've been out of the game. You did this, Baze, Baze. Make a long story short, you understand? I goes to New York and I see these people. And I'm, I'm asking, yeah, what y'all got on me? What you want me with me? You understand? These people got nothing to show me. You understand? So that was the end of the thing. You understand? Never made no statement. You understand? I did answer questions about pictures. You understand? That I knew they already knew about who was I, who was nice. You understand? Dumb shit. You understand? But we ain't never. You understand? Ain't no paperwork ever existed because it didn't happen, you understand? They ain't have nobody to take notes, none of that, you understand? So with this crazy shit that this clown want to make y'all think, you understand, that this brother right here, you understand, um, testified, gave information about anybody, that shit is bullshit, you understand? So I just really want to see the clown shit that he put on his platform today because, you understand, I know, anybody know the lie he is, I know the lie he is. I see you did a piece with Shabay, you understand? Um, like I say, Shabay, you are totally wrong that you took the gun from me. You took the gun from Domino. You could ask his former girlfriend, which she probably would never get involved with it. But you could go back to Plaza and ask Skip, ask Keith, ask Chad, those people who was actually with you. They'll tell you, Cool was nowhere in the vicinity when you took that gun from Domino. I was downstairs in Cunningham Game Room at that time. You understand? So we definitely... <laughs> you understand? Never had any um, thing. And like you say, you was doing it to help out, you understand, us from getting in trouble, bro. Let's call it for what it really is, you understand? I respect you to this day, but, you understand, at the time when you took that gun, you understand, you was being a bully, bro. You was taking advantage of youth, you understand? That's all it was, you understand? So, today we got a name for it. Back there, I don't know what you used to call it, but you bully that brother and you took the gun from us, you understand? Just like I say, I always got respect for you, but just like I say, I'm a different man today, you understand? So, we're going to call it what it is, bro. You understand? I mean, I know you're about 10 years older than me, so maybe your memory lapsed, you understand? But you heard your boy Brian Gibbs say before, no, it was Domino you took the gun from. You understand? Because, guess what? That story been out for umpteen years. From the day that that gun was taken, that story been out. And it was a 32, not a 22, Brian. So, that show you you wasn't out in the street yet. That show you you're lying, you're putting yourself somewhere that you wasn't, you understand? And you got this man agreeing until he pull out a dirty 38 on you, you understand? I mean, hey, but like I say, I don't take nothing away from Shabay. Shabay probably done been through a lot in his life <laughs> and, and, and got his stories mixed up. Me and you ain't never walked to the plaza together, Shabay. You understand? One thing with me, and if anybody who know me will tell you, a snake will never get two times to deal with me. You understand? What you did to Domino was what you did to me. You understand? So, me and you would have never been in the same company again, you understand, walking nowhere. Domino got killed in 83. What the hell I'm walking to the plaza for in 84? I only ever walked to the plaza to be with Domino. You understand? That's when I used to go to the plaza. Other than that, I ain't never had no reason to go to the plaza. So, you definitely got the wrong person when you say that um, we went, um, was walking up to the plaza and I'm looking at, oh, yo, I'm walking with the guy that took the gun. You understand? Come on, bro. That didn't happen. But peace out to you, bro. Still respect, you understand? But like I say, the same way I respect you, you respect me. So 
Love is love. You understand? Now I'm back to Brian. You understand? We always going through these um little incidents, you understand, that I'm jealous of Brian. No, I'm not jealous of Brian. Brian don't got nothing, never had nothing for me to be jealous about. So I really don't know what his fans be talking about. I'm envy, I'm jealous of him, of let him be great. Hey, he could be great. He is great at lying. And that's what he does to you on the regular. He lies to you on the regular. So if that's what y'all mean, let him be great, he could be great. And um, like I say, he, um, I, I don't hate the brother, you understand? We don't deal with each other, not because he don't pick up the phone, it's because I've been cutting him off. I bought him out of my life for that $30,000 that he refused to pay back, you understand? That's what, uh, and for these other lies, once I found out he got all these information out about me, that's why he was bought out, you understand? That, if I was to deal with that dude, he would deal with me, you understand? But I got no interest, you understand? He's a liar. He, he, he's just like a girlfriend that say, take me back, I'm going to do the right thing. I promise you, I'm going to do the right thing. And they start off that first week doing the right thing, then they right back at the old tricks, or oh, boyfriend. Hey, sorry, ladies, it ain't just about girlfriend, boy, girlfriend, but the, uh, any, any relationship that you left for a reason, you know? So that's why me and that dude don't deal with each other. He can't be trusted. You understand? He's a liar, and he ain't going to never tell y'all the truth. You understand? And just like I say, all this paperwork, I didn't make it up. I didn't make it up. This is what in, was in his possession. And he tells you the story about a house burning down. Yeah, the house did burn down. You understand? But he, what he failed to tell you, my mother's house. My mother passed away in 1992. You understand? <laughs> I inherited the house that I paid for. So it was no longer my mother's house. It was my house that I bought with my money. You understand? This make-believe stuff like I told you, $100,000 that he gave my mother for a house that cost over $150,000 back in 1987 when he was on violation. You understand? But he gave my mother $100,000 and never did nothing for his kids or his wife at the time. But he gave somebody $100,000. How come you ain't give nobody else a hundred thousand brag for it? Huh? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and just like I say, y'all, we, we got a couple other things coming to you, man. We're gonna um we matter of fact, D D nice Lily D should be calling in in a couple of days, you understand? Maybe we're gonna give him up to a week to ten days to call in. And like I say, speak his piece, you understand, because the guy didn't had Nice name all over the place. You understand? And it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, did he ever tell you the story of how he married to a nice baby mother? One one lady he would nice was once married to. And this dude turned around and married the young lady. And it was another wife that Nice had a kid by. He married her. These are his third and fourth white people. This the kind of mentality this brother got. But I bet you. I guarantee you, he ain't do a show on that yet. I guarantee you that. So that's his problem with nice. You understand? He wanted nice life. Like he wanted my life. Life. You understand? He just ain't never married none of my old girlfriends. You understand? But you understand? He married two of nice baby mother. And one was nice was formerly married to. So that should have been a topic. You know, the man always talking about he's going to tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. And he refuses to do it. So I wonder why. How you go, Brad? I wonder why you never did that. Hmm? But you're right. This is getting old, talking about this guy. But like I say, soon we're going to give you a whole package of what this brother been talking about. For y'all who slow out there, who can't understand what paperwork is, who believe he ain't never caused people to cop out for 30 years. You understand? That's 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 real crazy for y'all really to believe that somebody will get on a platform just to lie on this man and got paperwork for days on him. Paperwork for days. Paperwork y'all done saw. Paperwork that he used to say, show the paperwork. Show the paperwork. I don't care. But miraculously called YouTube to have it removed from my channel. What part of the game is that? You know who does that? A narcissist. You understand? 
he he act like he wanted y'all to see the paperwork, but he didn't leave it up. Why? It was more to come. So Brad, explain to your people why you had the paperwork taken down. You didn't care. God bless y'all. One.